This year, resolve to be prepared with emergency food storage from My Patriot Supply. Go to preparewithscout.com to get your four-week food kit, which includes 2,000 calories per day of tasty freeze-dried meals, snacks, and drinks, all with a 25-year shelf life. This set is currently marked down to 167 bucks, and it comes with free two-day shipping. There's also a two-week kit for only 79 bucks. Every order helps me produce more videos like this one, so go to preparewithscout.com today and stock up on some peace of mind. Let me be clear, I am not a car guy. But this is a car video, I hear you saying. Why would you make a video about a car if you're not a car guy? Well, that's the thing. This isn't really a car video. Yes, this video features a car, and I'll give you some details on it, but if this video is about anything, it's about balancing my thirst for outdoor adventure with my boring real-world obligations. It just so happens that my lifted 2012 Subaru Outback helps me find that balance. Now, I've got a lot of meat and potato details to share about my Outback, but let's have a few bites of dessert first. I take this car everywhere. It's my pack mule for exploring rocky, steep mountain roads, and my covered wagon for discovering vast, rolling desert ranges. I love being outdoors for the fun of it and for the discovery. There's always a valley, a mountain, or a trail I haven't seen yet, and these wheels help me find them. I can pack all my camp gear, plus a kit or two in this car, with room to spare, so we can enjoy those mountain views for days. I love going shooting in Utah's West Desert, where I can enjoy wide open ranges and big blue sky canopies. Finding a safe private spot is easy to do as long as you're able to make it across the huge spider web of intersecting dirt roads. Dry creek beds, ugly ruts, and tall weeds pop up out of nowhere, and you have to get past them if you want to reach that perfect spot. My lifted outback puts those areas in reach, and with all the top and interior cargo space I've got, I can bring piles of targets, guns, ammo, and range gear to keep me out all day long. Of course, any truck can do those things, but most don't have the on-road manners of this Subaru. When the weekend is over and it's time to hit the pavement, this car rides smooth, quiet, and fuel efficient at 22 City and 29 Highway. If I have to work a 9 to 5, and I do, I want to get to my desk comfortably and safely. The 2012 Outback has full-time all-wheel drive and continuously variable transmission for a smooth ride with reliable traction. My upgraded tires are also great in all weather, so I know I've got control. I'll touch on more of my experience as I get into the upgrades, but here are some basic details on the car. The 2012 Outback came in several colors and two engine sizes, 2.5 and 3.6 liter. It also came with either manual transmission or Subaru's Linear Tronic CVT. My 2.5 liter four-cylinder CVT version gets the best gas mileage of the bunch and still has 170 horsepower. Towing capacity is 2,700 pounds on my version and 3,000 on the 3.6, which means it can easily pull small tent trailers, teardrop campers, or loaded up light utility trailers once you get a hitch installed, which I did. I bought this wagon used about four years ago with around 100,000 miles on it. I've put nearly 60,000 on it since then, using it as a daily commuter, but also as my passport to the outdoors. In its stock configuration, this is an unusually capable car. Full-time all-wheel drive, 170 foot-pounds of torque, and nearly 9 inches of ground clearance enable it to tackle roads that might disable other cars. I'm not saying it'll hold up against trucks, jeeps, or UTVs, but I've seen many of those on the roads I've traveled, and they're often surprised to see me. Even so, given how many dirt miles I put on this thing, I decided to give it a little more capability. I started with a 2-inch lift kit from LP Adventure, which may not sound like a big change, but you'd be surprised. Right after that, I upgraded the tires for better traction, and then added the rooftop cargo basket for carrying bulky gear. I could certainly do more with this car, but I only wanted to give it a little more capability to help me do what I do, not go full overland with it. At least not yet. Let me give you some more details on those upgrades and talk about why I chose what I did. First, the lift. LP Adventures makes some of the only 2-inch lift kits you'll find for the 2012 Outbacks, but they're also very good. I got my complete kit for about 700 bucks and had an experienced mechanic help me install it. As a first-timer, I was surprised to see how simple the installation job was, and I could probably do it myself next time around. 
The kit comes with everything you'll need from strut spacers to brake line spacers to all the nuts and bolts. The key components, the 304 stainless steel strut spacers, are TIG welded to be tough and durable. They're also designed to keep the original camber specifications for better alignment. It's advertised to be a corrosion resistant kit, but I decided to spring for the powder coated spacers just to be sure. LP provides a detailed, illustrated installation guide, which makes the whole job look easy. You basically get your car onto a set of jack stands, remove all the wheels, and then follow the instructions. It took my friend and I around four hours on one Saturday to do the whole job. In the end, your car works exactly the same, but you've got taller struts. There's no change in the travel of your suspension. There was some difference in handling after the installation, but it wasn't dramatic and I adapted to it quickly. That said, I do notice how much higher off the ground I am, and at six foot two, I have a much nicer time getting in and out of my Outback now. I've had this kit installed for more than a year at this point, and I drive this car all over. I took it from central Utah to Las Vegas and back for SHOT Show 2019 and noticed zero freeway handling issues, though there was a drop in fuel efficiency. I drive it daily in city traffic and a few times a month in the desert and mountains, and it performs exactly as needed in each environment. This kit did just what I hoped it would, giving me more clearance and steeper angles of approach, breakover, and departure. I have far more confidence in this car off-road now, but no less comfort around town. I'm told the higher center of gravity puts me at greater risk of rollover. Well, I can't argue with physics, but I'm pretty careful off-road, and even more so off-camber. Accidents can happen, but caution and preparation go a long way, and I bring plenty of both. I'm also told that my CV boots will wear out faster because of the lift. That could be true, and I'll definitely keep an eye on it and update you if I see problems. Ultimately, any big modifications can be risky. You just have to weigh those risks as you make your decision. Now on to the tires. My need for new tires is actually what sparked this whole makeover. Well, that and the fact that I had recently paid the car off, so I had a little extra money for upgrades. I shopped around for tires for quite a bit and looked at a number of competitors before I settled on these Cooper Discoverer AT3s, size 235-60-R17. I chose these tires because they struck the right balance for me between capability, comfort, and cost. Being sized at 235 versus the stock 225, some retailers don't count the Coopers as a fit, but I'm here to tell you they work. Now I'll be honest, when they were first installed there was a little bit of rubbing, but a simple utility knife trim job to my front fender liners took care of that, and it really was a simple fix. The tires give me no clearance issues now, and haven't for over a year. The AT3s come with a 65,000 mile warranty, which is pretty generous for all terrain. The tread pattern, while less aggressive looking than other brands, performs surprisingly well in snow, rain, and off-road driving. As a bonus, these Coopers make very little noise on the road, especially compared to other AT tires. Along with less noise, they give you a pretty smooth ride as well. As I mentioned before, I've done some long freeway trips with these AT3s, and they are surprisingly smooth for what they are. In Cooper's words, the Discoverer AT3s combine on-road manners with off-road capability. After lots of driving on them, I have to say they're not wrong. The rooftop cargo basket was the last big addition to this car, and I'll cover that in a second, but I want to quickly point out the WeatherTech side window deflectors too. At some point I'll figure out how to comfortably spend the night in this wagon, and when I do, I'll want good ventilation. Window deflectors are a great way to keep the rain out while letting the car breathe. These WeatherTechs were easy to install and have been perfectly durable for a year now. At 100 bucks for the set, there are probably cheaper options, but I definitely trust these. I've heard that people have issues with windows getting stuck once these deflectors are in place, but mine have been fine. The WeatherTechs are a relatively small upgrade, but I think they're a great one to add to almost any vehicle. Now to the basket. There are so many options out there for rooftop cargo baskets, but I knew going into it that my Outback had some limitations. First, its rooftop weight capacity for the built-in crossbars is limited to 150 pounds. That meant the basket had to be fairly light in order to be useful. Those crossbars are also at a fixed distance apart, so I had to be sure the basket would work with them. I also knew that I'd keep it on full time, so it had to be unobtrusive, weatherproof, and at least kinda aerodynamic. Lastly, I wanted to get the most bang for my buck, so the big brand names were pretty much out of the running. Within those limitations, I started looking for a basket with good capacity and construction that would fit securely and look nice on my Subi. 
some forum hunting and Amazon browsing led me to the reasonably priced and very tough looking Rolla VTEX roof rack. The Rolla rack is not the lightest weight available at over 50 pounds, and it's not the cheapest at 135 to 150, but it is sleek looking, tough, and perfectly sized for my Outback. It's also far more affordable than comparable baskets from Yakima and Thule. The cross tubing is spaced to exactly match the Outback's crossbars, and the two-part rack can be expanded by adding a middle section sold separately. In its standard configuration, this rack does not interfere with the rear lift gate, but does partially block the sunroof. It also comes with a front wind fairing, which does seem to reduce drag, or at least it's quieter than I expected. I'm okay with the weight as I can still load a full 100 pounds in it safely, and I have gone a little bit over that. The basket's inside storage dimensions are 45 and a half by 32 and a half inches, so I can fit a good amount of bulky camp gear in it. The mounting brackets are not lockable, but they're tough and hold the rack down solidly. Every time I load and unload this rack, I grab the side tubes, step on the rear tire, and hoist myself up. It feels solid as a rock. The rack is mostly welded together with just one seam at the center. The front and back halves nest together and stay secured in place with screws. Rolla also provides rubber coverings for the joints to keep moisture out. Of course, I had to go the extra mile by spraying the joints with a few coats of Flex Seal. There are lighter weight cargo baskets and there are higher quality ones too, but I've been very happy with the Rolla VTEX. It looks great, feels solid, and has plenty of space for cargo. As I said earlier, there's plenty more I could do with this car, and I might do more in time. Additional lighting would be a great help for those long days shooting in the desert that turn into pitch black nights. Reinforced bumper and engine guards would also be smart to add more safety and protection from rocks and ruts. The car could use better suspension, more trailside emergency gear, and some clever interior sleeping arrangements, but all of that can wait. Like I said at the outset, I'm not a car guy and this is not really a car video. It's a video about a guy, like many others, who spends his weeks waiting for his weekends. I just want a vehicle that would get me safely through the one so I can have some fun with the other. And right now, my lifted 2012 Subaru Outback is exactly that. What's your adventure vehicle? Comment below. Thanks for watching.